Welcome back. The first project is the Sandhi, mentored by Mr. Aviral Chandra. The project in charge is Mr. Kiran Kishore. Sandhi is a graphical programming language designed for control system simulations and real-time system control. It offers simple abstraction and massive computing ability to the end user. Hello everyone, I'm Rishabh from Project Sandhi, a part of the FOSI team. Uh, our group FOSI is a group which aims at providing and enhancing the scope of op open source softwares. So one of such attempts is our project, Project Sandhi, which you can see is envisaged to be an open source alternative to LabVIEW. Now most of us are familiar with what LabVIEW does. It is a graphical programming software used for A, control simulations and B, data acquisition. So such things are very enticing on first look, but when it comes to the cost factor, it is costly. It costs around 60,000 rupees and the renewal charges are around 10,000. So here is an open source attempt to bring down that charge, uh, that cost of obviously it will be free of cost. The essence of graphical programming is what we have tried to bring in our software. Well, what graphical programming is, it functions as a sequence of blocks. You connect blocks after blocks after blocks, create a flow graph and then generate the entire program. So you don't have to write a single piece of code for your software or program. So let me give you a slight demo so that you get an essence of what we are doing in Sandhi. So this is how our software looks, Sandhi. Here you can see is the main pane. In this, I have made a simple program of x raised to power y, a simple power function. As you can see here, we have got a block, a power block, which has got two inputs, 25 and 2 as base and exponents. And we have a number sync. That is sort of a printf statement in your command line. So when we execute it, we get the output, 625. All right. Now, we have incorporated the features of blocks and flow graph in our user interface. Now, everything in Sandhi is in the form of blocks. It can range from a, as simple as an addition block to something as complex as a Kalman filter block. Everything will be in the form of blocks and they will be connected so that we get a total flow graph as our program. Now, how we structured it? Well, we obviously did not start from scratch. That's the beauty of open source. So we used a software called GNU Radio. It's an open source software used in the field of digital signal processing. It also runs in the principles of blocks and flow graphs. So we took that as a basic platform for our software and then we expanded over it. We deployed more and more because, and we chose this thing because it facilitated very robust system of block addition. So we can add to the functionalities of our software, of GNU Radio, sorry, and create something that is relevant to an entirely different domain, a domain of control engineering. Now, GNU Radio is coded entirely in C++, but it allows you to code in Python as well. But actually, the control computations and calculations in control engineering are way uh, complex than they normal, uh, normally are. So coding entirely everything in C++ and Python would have a lot of time and a lot of lines of codes. So we took a workaround. We used the power of Scilab. It's another open source software which is taken as an alternative to MATLAB. So we have Scilab as a backend for doing all the computations. We have GNU Radio in the front end for giving us a wonderful GUI. And in middle, we have Python to interface both of them. So the flow goes like we have a GNU Radio software. The values are fed from this, brought to Python workspace. Then these values are fed to Scilab. And the Scilab returns the output and we then push it up to the um, mainframe. Now the purview of our work. Well, we were four people. I have Samarth with me, I have Akansha with me, and I have Anoop with me. All of us were working on different modules. My task was to deploy more, deploy more and more custom blocks so that they fit in the domain of control engineering. Samarth was working on plots. Akansha's work was in interfacing more and more hardware devices. Right now, only one hardware, hardware devices were interfaced before we came, that was SBHS. And she has been working on devising strategies of interfacing more and more hardware devices. And then we had Anoop, who was working on interfacing this Sandhi framework from browser. So the compiled file that you saw there could be actually triggered from the browser, and the output could be seen at any remote location. And that's a larger aim of uh, bringing this uh, software forward in the field of virtual labs. So here is my task. First of all, I begin deploying a generic Scilab block. What this block does is you give it any Scilab, uh, Scilab script. Okay. It will execute it for you and print the output, or sorry, dump the output into the flow graph. Now, you would ask, 
why code? Because it is meant to be a graphical programming software. But the answer is that right now it is in a very nascent stage of developing. Okay, we don't have all the blocks available for us. So a lot of things that should be done should not be delayed only because we don't have enough blocks. So for simple purposes, you can use Scilab, okay, take its output, feed it into the flow graph and do whatever you want to do with it. Let's have an example of this. This is a very simple Scilab script, quite similar to MATLAB. Here I am printing and plotting a sine wave, all right. This is the block and here we feed in the parameters. You can see I have mentioned the path of the Scilab file and I have also mentioned the variable whose values are to be dumped because you can have more than one values. You can have x, you can have y, you can have z. So the variable that you specify here, that value will be dumped to the flow graph. And then here is a normal plot thing that plots the values for you. So these are the two blocks, two plots that we get. The first plot, this one is the one that has been generated by Scilab because Scilab also executes that flow of control. And this is the values that have been dumped to the Python workspace to the flow graph. Well, this has to deal with uh, plots. Th that is what we have done for the uh, debugging purpose. Okay. If it is a real-time plot, what is changing here? I don't see 200, 400, 600, 800, 1000 changing. Okay, sir, sir, that we are coming to that. that. That will come on the plot section on which he has worked. We have got a lot of plots. Okay, so for the demonstration purpose, I have used this plot to show okay. to you. He will come on to this when his part is there. Yeah. Okay, so that was the generic Scilab block. This is the snapshot. Now let's come to Merdley order trans block for continuous simulation of a system. Well, before we came here, we had a block called CSIM block that was used to simulate plant and controller dynamics together and simulate the entire system. Well, it worked totally fine. The only glitch with that block was that it supported only plants of order of transfer function of one. But we wanted more. We can have it up to any level that we wanted. So we have now added functionalities to this block. We have made it in two versions. In the first version, you can specify the coefficients of the numerator and denominator of the transfer function. So if your transfer function is like a1x plus a2 upon b1x plus b2, so you can specify the coefficients a1, a0, b1, b0. So that will define your transfer function. The other version is you can input the entire transfer function in the form of a string. Now why did we have two versions? Well, the first version facilitates the use of sliders. So suppose in runtime, you want to vary the value of some parameter say B0. So we can have sliders and we can vary its value as per our needs. So that is why we had two blocks. Now the limitation with the version of uh, coefficients is that it supports up to three order and I think that is quite enough as per uh, the contemporary needs are there. It can be expanded without any trouble. This is how this is how the block looks. We've got these parameters. Okay, Definitely it looks ugly. If you want a beautiful version, you can insert the entire transfer function in the form of a string. Here is a polynomial plotter block. Off and on, the people of control engineering and general electronics people, they would need to know the, uh, the behavior of any polynomial, right? Say x cube or x square, anything in a given certain range. So this is the block that facilitates it. You just provide the value of the polynomial, the expression for the polynomial, and you specify the range of values over which the plot has to be plotted. So the range for this is minus 40 to 40, and it plots it for you. Discrete time simulation block. I'm pretty sure the people of electronics background must have heard about something called Z-transform, simulating uh, systems uh, are discrete timed. So this block simulates a system of discrete domain. Now the math behind it is something like this, okay. So we have got a transfer function that defines your system, then we have got an input, okay, in the form of in time domain. What we get as an output is another uh, sine wave, another output signal in time domain that is the response of this system given the, the input. I will show you the working of this block. Okay, so this is a discrete time simulation block. Here is the transfer function I have fed. Again, I have to feed in in the form of the coefficient. We have fed in the uh, numerator, we have fed in the denominator, and we have connected a input as an input, and the plot thing plots it for us. This is the response. EC people must be familiar with response. It will plot according to it, sir. You give anything, it accepts only string values. It will pop out an error. Okay. You want me to type your name? It will simply not run. 
sir we have not yet worked on the entire gui fine okay. i don't know anything about control systems okay can you feed in some values which give me minus infinity and plus infinity as whatever the value of the plot if you are giving it an input it will behave according to the output sir correct uh, so tell me i generate some number there which creates minus infinity and plus infinity on the plot right and more or less sir, whether the infinity is plotted or not is not our issue it is the issue of the plot all right I, everything that you i definitely def definitely the user definitely this is not my infinity and minus infinity well we have another block uh, wxgy sync that will plot all the things for you it so give me straight line whether you get an infinity or not depends on the transfer function that you are feeding so i cannot i because i am not a control engineer so i cannot predict on which values we will get infinity so we have sir we have tested it no, up to transfer okay. functions of order 10 and we have got good enough plots no that is not good enough yeah, for you yeah. give something to the world it has to be robust definitely okay robust means i should do everything including Definitely. avinash they, they Sir, should i think be your point is very valid and we were confronted with the situation whether we should go on adding more and more functionalities or we should develop everything together entirely full proof so we were guided in such a way that we had taken a step towards making things more and more functional right as you can see the gui is very cramped okay it does not look very good it has to be improved so there are certain things that need to be done and beautified and more function and uh, you know spreading of the things can be done but right now we have just added more and more functionalities to this thing you are you are a good talker right? no, 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 can, sir. That, that i can see okay that does not absolve anyone from the responsibility of writing well tested code okay sir, and because of that everybody sir, knows who has worked definitely because of such interruptions by our guides we've been able to do this thing, this good okay now samat it's your part he'll explain more about the plots uh, all right uh, before i start i would like to stress on the fact that it is still in the development phase everything that we worked on is in the development phase and our focus was more on adding more functionality rather than giving something which can be uh, given out as a product outside to the world i basically dealt with plots in sandhi the first one was my major task i've been working on a generic plot block which would give you more or less anything that you try to plot but again there is as we found an error infinity it doesn't show that you it, you plotting an infinity so it's just in this development phase and then we are trying to accommodate more and more either we'll shift to a plot because that the, this plot is basically a real time plot if you feed in values it will plot real time that is what its main functionality as of now is if it is a real time plot okay if i keep on feeding it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 up to 1000 does my y scale or automatically change yes yes it changes yeah there is an auto zoom feature there is a there's also a feature no, no does it change yes it does okay. but, so when after going up to 1 million i start ramping it down does it change back yes you can also view whatever happened at does, at scale at time t equal to 0 to till time t equal to 1 million and you can view and it will it'll fit whatever whatever you've given in the screen whatever range is there in the screen it will demonstrate you according it'll scale it down accordingly so that you according whatever is visible yeah it'll scale it down okay. accordingly good So yeah, that's what I said. I've been working on something which is generic so that you can use it. And also, uh, we've created two versions of it. And uh, first of all, I would uh, like to tell that initially, when I started working on this, we had uh, bugs. This module was already existing in uh, uh, Sandhi, and this thing had bugs. For uh, the first and foremost was that it, first of all, it wasn't giving you real-time plots. The uh, window used to freeze, and uh, that bug was fixed. And then, if you suppose want to change, if you uh, have a slider. and if you move that sl slider to adjust the values then they were not getting reflected onto the plot so that's what we implemented now uh, again it's capable of handling real time plot now it can plot the output from almost all the blocks i would like to say i forgot the part where it says almost all the blocks then there was a certain extra features added where the one is auto zoom the other is the history part like from t is equal to 0 till t equal to 1 million you can view the entire plot wherever till it goes it's, if it's plotting real time you'll be able to scroll it as and when the values are uh, accumulated So this is a snapshot of the working of the plotting block. I'll demonstrate that. So this this is how it works. So you're getting the values, is changing the scale accordingly, and then once now this is the first version, wherein after it reaches the end of the uh, window, it'll move forward and you'll not be able to view what has happened in the past. So this is for one use, and that that's the uh, the other version is where you have the scroll bar functioning, and you can view uh, back and forth. Now, uh, why do we need two plots? 
first of all the z transform value the this interval where, where we are updating is very small but then the z transform uh, the block that we had yeah so this is uh, this was one version of it the other version was where you have a scroll bar functioning and it gives you proper plots so that was the major work that i had now the cha uh, challenge the challenges that i faced was there was no proper uh, documentation of gnu radio block gnu radio software so we had no clue where to look for first of all i didn't know what the problem the, the problem was in a way defined as that the uh, blot sync block is not working now we didn't know which files to look for what to look for in those files and what to change so it took a good amount of uh, time to uh, scan through all the files and uh, find the files which are associated with the plot block modify those fi files accordingly and then bring about the change and that that's how we got it functioning so that was the entire work which was re related to the plot sync block now the body block now from whatever i've learned about control systems in the past one one and a half month was that everything revolves around transfer functions you uh, and you want to visualize some uh, a plant a system you model it using a transfer function now transfer function looks like basically a polynomial function now now what you want to do is you want to see it using different plots and you want to like literally view it as a graph so uh, that's what the board and the um, the plot uh, the blocks which i'm going to demonstrate they will be doing the uh, one is the bode plot now why do we need the bode block the first uh, reason is that it is capable of plot plotting the frequency response of a given transfer function now what is frequency response you have an input you have an output now if you do a change certain changes in the input how is the output going to change so that's what the bode block represents so it has both magnitude and phase plots it is something which belongs to the control engineering domain and a, if a control engineer is sitting here then i'm pretty sure he'd be able to realize what exactly i'm talking about so i'll demonstrate this uh, software is basically focused on work uh, control engineering domain so uh, this is the input you give it a normal transfer function which is in the form of a uh, polynomial it's uh, unlike what uh, rishabh had done he had given coefficients and was looking bulky but here you just give it a give it a polynomial and it will work and again this script is run using scilab and uh, if at all there is an error as if you give say a random a string like avinash then the scilab won't run it and then again uh, it will not work it won't throw an error but it won't work this is a uh, screenshot sorry and since this is graphical how do you handle unending loops we don't have loops as uh, now what there is, no, there is no loop block as such as of now in sandi and in sandi control systems normally have a feedback loop no that's what i'm telling you that there is no functionality of loop as of now okay no we don't have we haven't dealt with it it's not our we weren't assigned to work on that it's somebody else who's worked on it and he's our mentor so we won't uh, be able to okay. comment anything okay. on that yeah so this is again a snapshot of the bode plot now the nyquist block again it's again a plot which is used to visualize the trans function to assess its stability to find the region of convergence it is similar let somebody else talk about something else. we will run, we'll run out of time we understand right. what you have done okay so then again you have pole zero block and then i would transfer it to uh, yeah so i'm anoop i worked on uh, triggering the script through the browser what uh, what you just saw so uh, initially i worked with the uh, sbhs as a single board heater system and the main aim was to uh, access the graph i mean give heat and fan values and generate the graph on the browser so here we have a three tier architecture we have the client the google app engine and server and the server interfaces with the single board heater system so uh, what happens is uh, the client sends a request to google app engine google app engine picks up the heat and fan values and forwards it to the server the server sends the heat and fan values to the sbhs the sbhs upon receiving heat and fan values starts um, changing its temperature values these temperature values are picked up by the server and returned to google app engine which returns it to the client at the client side we plot a graph using google charts so this is a basic approach for handling the sbhs yeah so this is basically how we designed it um this is the client page where uh, the client can enter heat and fan values using the knob input and uh, upon clicking submit he gets a sample graph something like this uh depending on the heat and fan value that was submitted this is another graph that we got um for a different heat and uh, fan value now we move to a uh, remote triggering of the sandi framework uh, what we earlier dealt with was uh, the sbhs now we were looking at um, generating plots from sandi on the browser so the main objective was uh, to be able to run sandi framework on receiving a request on the browser and sending back the actual plot onto the browser so uh, what we've 
this is the architecture we've used. Uh, we have a client and a server, and the server uh, client sends a request to server. Server makes use of an XML parser to modify the actual flow graph that was on the server. Uh, the server also maintains a mapping of different directories which contain flow graphs, and it invokes the uh, appropriate flow graph depending on the incoming request. Once, uh, once the request comes in, the server uh, executes the flow graph and sends the response back to the client. And again, at the client end, we use Google Charts to uh, render a graph. Uh, yeah, so now we have uh, the issues like sending parameters to the flow graph. Since our flow graph is already defined, we have, we have to have some way to send parameters to the flow graph. So, um, who designed the XML? Oh, that, XML. that, that came with GNU Radio. So, gotcha. the GRC file itself is an XML file, which right. we modified to send parameters. Okay. Yeah, so we modify the GRC file. The GRC file is basically an XML file. So we modify the XML file and the parameters that the user requested. And now we have to retrieve and send it back to Google Charts. Uh, we were faced with two situations. One is with the plot sync and one is with the file sync. In plot sync, the value is sent to STD out. So that's where we pull it out of and send it to the browser. In a file sync, the values are put, uh, pushed into a file that was uh, defined in the, on the server. So we process that file to get the values. One sec, what about a T? Oh, both? Yeah, then you can pick it up from either place because the same values are going to plot sync no, and... Am I allowed to do both? Yeah, you're allowed plot to do Plot sync as well as file. Yeah, you're allowed to do both. Uh, this is the, a sample uh, application of that. Uh, we have a client page where you can select a sync and the type of flow graph. Currently, it was only designed for two flow graphs, the square and the generic. So in the square block, um, if, when, when I select square, it asks me for the vector values, which is 1, 2. I've given 1, 2, and minus 2. Uh, and then this, uh, for now, we just have a static flow graph being displayed on the browser along with the plot. Uh, the GUI is, is in work, work in progress. So this is the flow graph. Uh, the, this is exactly the flow graph that was there in Sandhi on the browser now. And uh, this is the corresponding plot. So you have 1, 2, and minus 2 being plotted repeatedly. Uh, yeah, this is for the generic block now. Uh, in the generic block, you can also specify which function you want to use. Like here, I'm using the absolute function. You can also use um, uh, sine, cos, etc. So, yeah, again, a flow graph is displayed, and this is a corresponding plot of the absolute function. Uh, now, over to My task was to deploy a block, a standalone block for uh, a MIMO device. Up till now, only one device was interfaced with Sandhi, that is SBHS, and that single uh, it output device. But now, I was supposed to take up a multiple input, multiple output device. So uh, the requirements were uh, multiple port mapping, handling data from multiple channels, and uh, we had uh, a quadruple tank and reactors available that we could have interfaced. Uh, a quadruple tank system. It's a multivariable control process in which uh, we have six outputs and two inputs. The two inputs are fed to the two pumps, and we have to control uh, the water levels in the two tanks. And the two, six outputs that we get are the four flows in the four tanks and the two uh, water levels in the lower two tanks. The earlier approach that we took up was to use a DAC card to acquire data from the device and use comedy drivers to interface the device. A uh, comedy block, we could deploy a comedy block in Sandhi and then we could uh, easily access the drivers to uh, collect data from the sensors that are the output from the quadruple uh, tank. DAC cards, uh, data acquisition cards, function as a device that di digitizes incoming uh, analog signals, signal conditioning, interface sensor outputs with the system. Comedy control and measurement device interface that provides drivers for a variety of DAC cards. So there's a list of uh, cards that are already being interfaced and the drivers are available. Uh, why did we choose Arduino? Uh, because the DAC cards weren't available to us because of the ongoing research. So we had to take up another uh, approach for it. So we used an Arduino to interface it because it provided with the six analog pins that could uh, be helpful in uh, acquiring data and the digital pins as well. So we used serial communication then. Uh, we decided to take this up for acquiring data. Then interfacing Arduino and bringing it to Sandhi framework. Reading sensor values, uh, we had to establish a serial communication. So we started off uh, by interfacing two sensors, that's the Hall effect sensor and the thermistor, with uh, the Arduino and finally bring it into Sandhi framework. So our task was to f uh, first check that out. So uh, we decided to have a standalone block in Sandhi that could read the values from the sensor and then we could plot those values using plot sync. 
So this is the diagrammatic representation of the same. We had the uh, two sensors and we interfaced it with Arduino and then finally brought it to Sandhi framework. But this is, uh, this is how the block looks like and uh, these are the two values that were plotted from the two sensors, the Hall effect sensor and the thermistor. Uh, interfacing, yeah, the same approach could then be followed for interfacing the quadruple tank as well, just like we interface two sensors, so we could uh, try the same thing with the quadruple tank sensors as well. The other thing that we did was facilitating sliders with SPHS. So up till now, we had an SBHS block, but all but we had to give feed-in values with separate blocks, uh, the fan value and the heat value. But now we had uh, sliders. We had uh, sliders to input the fan value. So this is how it looks like. We could just pass it as a parameter to the SBHS uh, block, and now the fan value could be changed from here itself. I'd like to conclude uh, with the future scope. First of all, the GUI doesn't look that good. So the next task is to beautify this so that people use it. Because it doesn't, if it doesn't look good, nobody is willing to use it. The next task is to whatever functionality has been added has to be properly tested with almost all the inputs and giving a con considering boundary conditions and uh, give out proper errors instead of uh, code. Uh, I mean, errors in the form of code. Next one would be facilitation of multi-channel plots and plots. As of now, you can only plot one source. What if you have two sources or three sources? What if you want to view all of them together at the same time and they're interrelated to each other? So that time, what you do is that uh, the next thing that we can go forward for is a multi-channel plot sync. Now, uh, as again, we need to have more hardwares which need to be interfaced with Sandhi so that this can be used across all the colleges as it is being planned to incorporate it with virtual labs. And the one more thing is that uh, as of now, the security aspect of using Sandhi via the browser is not uh, touched upon. So it'll be very, very good if, if it's uh, secure because otherwise people, if it's not secure, you won't use it. So that's, uh, that's the end of it. And uh, I, I'd like to tell you that five experiments as of now have been converted from LabVIEW to Sandhi using the tools that we have developed over the past one and a half months. So that is there and that's it. I have one question. There is nothing similar available on the web? It is something which has been used, which has been forked from GitHub and we have modified that. But there is nothing similar for control engineering. For a particular aspect, I mean, when you're talking about control engineering, you don't have blocks as Kalman filter or Z transform or something. Pole zero plots, Bode plot, you don't have anything which can do uh, such things. Now, what is the stage at which Sandhi is there? Does the LabVIEW product, for example, have a pump? Okay, and their graphical representation of pump is some rotating thing. Is that what it is? When you say my our graphics is bad? Yes. The answer is yes. The lab view is at a level where you have, uh, where you, when you're talking where about instead a plant, of a plot, okay, or instead of something, I have got, I can see that rotating animal or rotating pump or whatever it is, whatever is BHS, I see a graphical view of SBHS. And apart from that, there is a temperature which says, is that what you are saying, better graphics? I'll tell you about the graphics. Suppose you have a knob. You can rotate that knob in, like, you can literally get the feel of rotating a knob when you are using LabVIEW. But in our case, we just have a slider. You have to slide it. And there are various other functionalities which are there, like, which are graphically appealing to a user, which are there in LabVIEW, which for a person who's working on it might not require, but they're appealing to the user because they look fancy. So that's what we're, uh, we're trying to tell you, okay. that our graphical user interface is not that at that level where uh, LabVIEW is as of now. And also, if you click on a particular block of LabVIEW, you can view, view what are the internals of the block. You can go deep, what if that block is composed of, say, uh, sub, uh, sub blocks, you can view what is there inside the sub block. To an extent, uh, give, uh, gives us... And when you say view, it means physical pictures. It's like you have a circuit. So you can view the circuit diagram. Suppose you have an SPHS block and you have a plot sync. So you, you put a wire over there. So if I want to see what is there inside SPHS block as of now, you can't do that in uh, this. Right. But LabVIEW, if it, if it has an SPHS block, then it will allow you to do that, go into details to see exactly how it is integrated. And one of you, uh, when you say you are integrated triggered using web, that is the first step towards giving a graphical representation on the client side so that I can use it to trigger the ser server and get the output. Is that what you are saying? When you said you integrated Sandhi with a browser, yeah. okay, is that the first step towards give, giving me a client-based application yes, with sir. all yeah. the graphics so that I can turn a knob 
So you will send a signal so to Sandhi that, and get it back. That has to be done in Sandhi. This is just for like remotely triggering the uh, remotely triggering the framework. So suppose you have uh, the main aim was you have virtual labs. So I'm sitting right here and I want to do an experiment which is uh, with a device which is there in IIT Bombay. So now I want to give a, a heat and temperature value and I want to see the graph, but I don't have the device and I'm not even willing to pay for the device. So what what uh, exactly IIT Bombay was planning is to allocate a particular slot wherein you give a particular uh, slot to a student and that student during that time will give a particular heat and fan value and he'll, he'll perform the experiment just by sitting at home and not with the actual hardware. So that was the purpose of giving it to a browser. Okay.